Ready for another round? It's Bruise Day Tuesday. Here's Drez and Big Nate. And the Scots, a.k.a. Rocky and Bull. It is Bruise Day Tuesday, brought to you by the Southern Restaurant and Six Pack Store in downtown Blacksburg. We are in Studio B because the boys from Great Wilderness Brewing Company are here sharing they're delicious brews. The first round, we did a little fruity stuff. We did the uh, watermelon kolsch, and you had the strawberry cream. Yes. You liked it? I, I, I do, and I stand by what I said. Maybe one of the best things I've ever had. Wow. Watermelon kolsch was delicious. They, it, they both would have been fives, but yeah, the well, strawberry was a little more five. Now it's getting more into my domain. I think I think we're moving on to the IPAs. Is that correct? Exactly right. All right, what do we got? So we actually have two different West Coast style IPAs here, the same base beer. Um, and actually, we were at Craft Brewers Conference not too long ago, and one of the vendors um, is actually extracting and isolating terpenes from the cannabis plant. Mm. And actually making that into water soluble products that you can add directly into your beer. And they actually had a lot of IPAs you could try that uh, would kind of enhance those hop flavors that you used to see. And so we have two of those today. One of them is a Master Kush IPA, which is going to be really uh, strong, dank forward. That one's um, for me. That's so right. Go ahead and pass that this okay. way. All and, right. Uh, all right. And we also have a, a Pineapple Express uh, Terpene IPA, which is a little more fruit forward and floral. That's for you. And and it's my understanding that only one of you knows exactly what's in these bottles. Holy That crap. would be me. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. That is dank. So now I, I've smelt this. And if I was to guess, I would imagine I would feel a bit different after drinking this beer. But you're telling me, so this doesn't have any of the THC uh, sort of effect this is just beer but it just smells and perhaps tastes like exactly greenery <laughs> <laughs> yes wow so is that is that becoming a popular sort of thing i guess you i mean is that yeah yeah, yeah. i mean you have other breweries i mean like uh sweet water brewing company down in atlanta georgia you they know, got they, their they 420 their, or the g uh the g13 g13 so yeah. and that comes from the the g13 strain and they they do a great job with it where they actually marry some some hemp flavors in with theirs and everything uh, in order to pull um, as well as the terpenes and everything from the G13 strain. And they really give you that super, super cool dank flavor profile. Yeah, so I'm not a botanist, but isn't, <laughs> is that right? That's right. Right. That's how you should just start every stuff. sentence. I'm not a botanist, but, <laughs> but so isn't cause hops and I guess hemp, was that what you would say? They're pretty similar in the world of, plantary i suppose right Absolutely. i mean i guess they're they're kind of similar qualities and whatnot mm -hmm. yeah for sure and uh you know as as i mentioned earlier a lot of those kind of hot flavors and aromas really overlap with a lot of those terpenes mm -hmm. so they've been able to isolate some that are you know just really forward dank uh flavors and aromas and some that are more flavor forward so they have some that are more like mango flavored that you would get from you know some uh really specific uh I uh, excuse me, hops that you would put in your whirlpool or something like that. So you can actually add this into, say, when you're cold crashing directly into your fermenter um, to enhance those flavors. Hmm. So, and I know, like I said, this, so this doesn't have any, like, I guess, would it be THC or whatever? Are, are there any beers that do have that sort of element, like where you can get, oh, this is, uh, you know, I guess because edibles are so popular. Is there drinkables? Is no, there beer so, drinkables that so have that sort of thing? You know, um, you cannot mix alcohol with THC. You just can't. Um, it's not legal anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, certain in certain states in the Midwest and the West Coast and stuff, there are already breweries mm -hmm. that are making, I'm not sure on the East Coast yet, but um, they're making THC sodas. So, the so at the brewery, so they'll have their beers and then they'll have a separate, like, like yeah, a have THC the... root beer. Exactly. It, well, It'll be like, yeah, THC, like um, there's one brewery that does um, like a blue dream and another one, they do a tangerine and it's, it's a, it's a straight up soda. There's no alcohol in it, but there is five milligrams of THC in it. So in one, like 12 ounce or whatever. Yeah. Like in a can, it's okay. a typical can, hmm. um, but it's, you can't do that here in the state of Virginia. 
So, um, of course not. States, this so. commonwealth <laughs> that we live in won't allow anything like that to happen. But uh, speaking of, so I know um, I want to talk a little bit more about Great Wilderness Brewing Company because I know that okay. I, in my mind, I went to root beer because I remember talking with you about this off air. And because I'm a big fan of root beer, that's my favorite soda. And if I remember correctly, you were talking about even doing a root beer, perhaps. That is correct. We will do a root beer. Um, you know, having having a craft soda on on tap is important for us, just because it is a family environment um, that we're trying to create. And you know, and there are also people who just don't drink alcohol, mm -hmm. you know, but want to be a part of live music and any kind of other entertainments that we're doing. Um, as a as you know, since we will have food and things of that nature, it just provide some alternatives to other than just beer. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about Great Waters Brewing Company coming to Pulaski. Uh, give us an idea where the location is, sure. what the timeline's looking like. I know you mentioned, uh, uh, you know, bands or live music. So I'm assuming you're planning on having like maybe a, a stage somewhere or something. Give, give me the full rundown. Let's get sure, the deeds. Sure. All right. So, so the brewery is actually you know, the old McCarthy building um, on First Street uh, downtown, right in the heart of downtown. It's a full acre parcel. It's a two-story building from 1910, and it's currently located right next door to the new basketball court and skateboard parks that they just put in on First Street. Cool. Uh, we are, we should, right now everything is pretty much done and ready to roll, so we're supposed to start construction any time now, and it's basically about a six month build out for the contractor. So we are still targeting for spring. And I could be wrong, but six months from a contractor is more like nine months reality. Uh, I mean, you don't think so? No, I it, mean, let's, he actually, let's be, let's try and keep be realistic about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, everybody it, I've talked to that's had any work done ever. It always takes longer. It's not, they never finish early. That's six sure. months pretty padded. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Good. Know, good. So six months hard, pretty padded. So it's and what we're doing. You know, we're gonna we're gonna renovate and and build up the. We're gonna fix the structure of the full building. You know, and then we're gonna finish out the first floor. So we're gonna open out, open up the brewery with the first floor area. Uh, we'll run twenty taps downstairs, um, and then once we're open, we're gonna finish, continue working on the second floor, which will open up to more space. And ultimately build another bar upstairs with probably another six to 10 more taps upstairs um, so that people don't have to kind of bounce around, things of that nature. It's all going to be the same products that you're going to find downstairs. And we'll have upstairs, we'll eventually have real dark boards, some, a couple old school arcade games, shuffleboard, that kind of stuff, as well as more seating. Um, outside, since we have such a very large outdoor space, we'll run uh, quite a few cornhole boards set up. Mm -hmm, We're going to have mm -hmm. some fire pits set up along the creek. And um, probably in year two, we'll be able to build out the stage that we've had designed and everything for the build for the brewery. Um, eventually, that, that would be a 30-foot by 20-foot outdoor coverage stage that will be permanently affixed to the property. Very nice. In the, in the meantime, we'll do some makeshift stages and, yeah. and things of that nature, whether we rent one or we you know, do a little work with a local farmer to bring in a hay wagon or two. And, uh, <laughs> just do some old school hay wagon concerts out there. So yeah. The goal is to have live music outdoors every Friday, Saturday night and uh, bad weather and maybe even other days we might just run some acoustical music indoors. Um, yeah. So that kind of stuff. Yeah, dude, that sounds fantastic. So I, if I remember correctly, you said 20 taps uh, downstairs. We are going to run 20 taps downstairs. So Scott, uh, the brewer, Scott, you're going to have your work cut out for you, sir. He no just kid. found out. <laughs> <laughs> with me but, no. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, but i guess i mean with with you know how many different and unique styles y'all are talking about doing i guess it wouldn't be that hard to fill up that many taps i mean you already i mean how many beers have you had to guess under i suppose this collaboration of great wilderness brewing between the two of you how many different beers have you made or styles even and you know i mean like it's, it's probably it's probably well over 50 now right. yeah. yeah and you know, and I, I think what's exciting is, of course, we can have those flagships on that are always going to be, you know, taking up four or five taps. But being able to rotate beers and have some of our smaller pilot batches, really mm -hmm. those kind of experimental stuff and get feedback from, you know, the local community on whether or not we should do a big batch of that. Mm -hmm. So I think the 20 tap um, kind of system is really going to give us some flexibility to do that. Now, and I know that you brought in, uh, I guess, what's it, what? how big are these bottles? 20, 22? 22. 
22 ounce bottles of, of beer and there's just plain brown bottles, gold caps, just typical deal. Are y'all planning on doing any sort of stuff to go or is it will be strictly growlers? Are you going to be canning? Are you going to be bottling? What Do you see any of that sort of for the future? So we, we won't do any kind of mass production for distribution, that kind of deal. Um, it's really about the local community and having people come out trying to create this um, destination type location, you know, besides what we offer as a brewery, you know, we're going to be doing, you know, the goal is to have four major beer festivals on this property a year, um, as well as different events, such as, you know, we want to do a Centurion race or two um, that will start 50 miles. It'll go start at the brewery and run 50 miles north and 50 miles back. But it'll be segmented as well, where there'll be a 10 mile and a 25 mile portion to that, as well as when that goes. Because you're right out. there on the trail. Is that what you're talking we about doing the, it on there? The, um, actually, that'll or... probably be more street race, but oh, okay. we, will, we are hoping to be able to do some on the New River Valley Trail because it connects to the Dora Trail, which is right across from the brewery. Um, those kind of different things. Um, so that's a lot of what we're looking to accomplish with some of that. So, well, Growler fills, I would assume. Maybe we, we will do growlers. We have a, a super cool uh, keg style growler that, that we'll be running. Um, it looks like a mini keg. I have um, one of those. Yeah, I, yeah, That's my favorite growler that I have. Yeah, so we'll be, we'll be running that and we will do some cans, cans to go at the brewery. We won't do distribution um, outside into like grocery stores, things of that nature. It's really about, um, but it's about the local community. It's about having people come out and, you know, if they enjoy, you know, some of our beers, be able to take some home with them as well and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's, and that's the thing. I mean, you got to imagine and, you know, all goes well. Yeah. This will be a destination brewery and people are going to come. They're going to like your stuff. They're going to want to be able to bring some back and share it. So you got to have at least cans to go. Yeah. You know, and, and we will do a lot of that. And like I said, you know, there's a lot of plans for different festivals and things that we're looking to do as well as, you know, I was in the Marine Corps as a Marine Corps veteran. The veteran population is you know, very important to me. Um, and 22 a day for veteran suicide awareness. We're looking to hold, hold a major fundraising event for 22 a day and bringing in a lot of big um, veteran owned and operated com companies throughout the whole country um, and focusing on our county. You know, Pulaski is a very important county to the veteran population because there is a large number of us here. Mm -hmm. So and so that is a big push for me. That's awesome, man. Well, I'm really glad to hear about all that stuff. Let's go ahead and untap the IPAs because I know there's still more beers to be drank and we still got it. We're already, we're already going pretty good. So Nate, how, how is your, I mean, is it nice? I mean, at this point, I probably not as just dank as say, Don't even go to me, but um, I, I do, I do, yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to kind of comment on the way that, that the, the terpenes and, and it complement the hops so well. I think that's a, uh, it seems like such a natural extension that, uh, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's a five. You can't go wrong with it. And I honestly, I forgot to ask because I'm so used to just looking at the liver. What are the ABVs? Last round, this round, do you? So this one is 7.2. 7.2? In is... A. <laughs> oh, in no, A. Oh, I didn't realize. Well, and, and I guess we also, you know, usually we have other people on tap. Do you go ahead and critique your own beer? I want to have your, hear your thoughts. I'm sure I know, you know, I know how it works. You're probably your own worst critic, I oh, would absolutely. imagine. What do you think of how this turned out? So we specifically designed this recipe um, to mainly showcase the terpenes and just see what flavors we pulled from that. So I specifically wrote the recipe not having as much of the normal hop additions as we normally would have because I didn't want to overpower any of the, the terpene contributions. So mm -hmm. this is kind of a, a more setback IPA. It is 70 IBUs, but it doesn't drink like it. 70. Okay. Right? Wow. That is so surprising. It's still super approachable, um, but you can pick up on the different flavors of these terpenes. And that was kind of the experiment, right? So um, I personally liked the pineapple express terpenes a little bit better. They were just more fruity and floral, whereas the master Kush one is more that, really dank it hit you right in the face flavor. as soon as i poured yeah. it in the glass i was just like bam yeah yeah it'll really get you um but it was a great great way to test using the same base beer brewed at the exact same time with just two different ingredients you know? so that was the only difference only difference wow yeah. well i'm looking forward to seeing how different it is uh on the break and so but yeah the nose on this was delicious i mean and oh. now i don't i don't smoke marijuana Obviously, I would say it's illegal, whatever. but no, I just really don't smoke like I used to. I used to used to smoke fairly regularly and whatnot. But every now and then, it is nice 
to get that nice little call back and muster up some good memories and stuff. And man, this, this, the nose on this really was like, whoo, that takes me back. Good stuff, man. I'm going to give it a five. That is fantastic. 7.2. That's a nice, that's a nice beer right there. All right. You're in the hot seat now, man. What's your jam? Ooh. Uh, stuff when I should have been thinking about this. You had earlier. a whole, uh, I know. A whole you had the Ozzy song and a whole it's segment about... to come up with one. So this is a little newer, but it really we play new stuff. Very reminiscent well. of Led Zeppelin. You guys heard of Greta Van Fleet? Have no. you heard, have you heard of Greta Van Fleet? Ever? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have to see if I can maybe Google and pull up YouTube or something real quick and see if I can get a Greta Van Fleet song on for you. Absolutely. Uh, all right, cool, man. Well, we'll do that. We'll play some Greta and we'll come back and drink another round. Great Wilderness Brewing Company right here on Brews Day Tuesday with 105.3 The Bear. Stick around. 